Pod Tackler, the unofficial Halo Universe podcast, presents episode 876, Silver Plated Narrative, recorded live on February 15th, 2024. Hello, everyone. Welcome to Podtacular, the unofficial Halo Universe podcast. I am your host for this evening, Dust Storm, as GT is nowhere to be found. I have texted him. I have not seen him hop on the Skype call. Did check in with <laughs> the Facebook stalking, and his wife did post something earlier this morning, so they should be okay. No fallout from Kansas City Chiefs winning the Super Bowl. It's there in Kansas. Yeah, they're in Kansas City. Um, yeah, we, we assume he's okay. Hope he's okay. Uh, we'll hopefully see him with Frag and Friday tomorrow or the next week. Anyways, so it's going to be a solo, solo show. I have not one, done one of these in a while. And I must be out of practice because my tongue keeps getting tied. <laughs> but it's okay. We have a bunch of news to go over. We did have our Frag and Friday, as usual, on Infinite the past few weeks. And we did get a little bit of illusion gameplay in. I have to say it's uh, about what it was when I played it before it released. Uh, definitely feels and, and looks a lot more clean and fresh, but the gameplay is definitely hit or miss. I, I know for me, one of the things that with that map and how it's built into three lanes, it can get very chaotic and the gameplay... I, I haven't figured it out for me. I, I know a lot of people love it. A lot of people like the more arcadey feel of the map. It has a lot of Halo 1 and Halo 2 inspirations for its design and layout, which definitely works in an arcadey format, but I feel the, mechan the mechanics of Halo CE and Halo 2 fit that arcadey style a lot more than the competitive nature of Halo Infinite. So, either... When I played it back then, I wasn't as concerned of being competitive. It was just more playing for fun. And I didn't have as much of a problem back then. Or now I'm super competitive. Or And maybe it just doesn't mesh well with me. Or maybe it's the clash of the two. And some people really like it. And I'm just the outlier. Thank you, Hayden, for the raid of two. Hope your stream went well. It is just me tonight. Don't know where GT is, but thank you for coming on over and bringing your stream over here. We got a little bit of news that we're talking about and probably a little bit shorter show for the night because, again, GT's not here. No one to bounce things off of. But we've got some things to go through. And Pen, sorry, I do not have the shutout command. I should probably get one actually programmed into stream elements. So I'll work on that. Thank you, Thunder Chief, for being over here following my... Hayden over here to the stream. But that's it for Fragon Friday. We'll be on Infinite tomorrow with the update to the Big Team Battle playlist. Five new maps have been added to Halo Infinite's Big Team Battle playlist. And so far, from what I've seen on social media, the reception has been very good for all the maps. I've seen some of the maps played in some community events. The first two and either the fourth or fifth one in the montage reel that just got released yesterday or Tuesday, Tuesday, showed off the five new maps. And of those maps, three have been used in other big team community play dates. And those played really well. Looking at some of the maps, they, they seem kind of odd with their layout, but... You can only get so much from a fly through. So we will be playing it, I'm sure, throughout the entire night tomorrow once we get a lobby big enough and play, really playing big team. Which is kind of sad because squad battles definitely hits that itch of the quote unquote classic Halo with Halo 2 and Halo 3 inspired maps. But it's gotten so sweaty. And I'm sure Pins and Bobby and Laird will probably <laughs> echo that in the chat. It's gotten. 
really crazy. I think the population for squad battles has probably gone down to the point where now it's just the tryhards and the sweats that are in there. Don't get me wrong, it's still fun. We still have some good games that we play and get some good outcomes for <laughs> our team, but it's a grind. And it sucks to lose four or five games in a row. BTB has been the place where we've had a lot more fun, had more, more chance to get laid back, and have a lot more of those wild moments actually happen. Those really crazy Halo moments that everyone is used to. Yeah, those, those sweaty nerds, Laird, for, for sure. We've got some of them on our team, too. Especially Bobby over here, who <laughs> is just like full tilt all the time. And then you've got GT that's just <laughs> not... <laughs> He uses the mantra of how not to play Halo, but gets super frustrated after everything. <laughs> but we'll be playing big team for sure tomorrow. We'll see if we get all five of the maps. We usually have about two hours worth that GT hosts, and then some of us will play a little bit more afterwards. But I think for the most part, we've got a pretty good group that we ha we go in with. Uh, Typically, max out around eight people in the party, and we have a good time. So we've got more spots for those that are listening. If you want to find a team to hop on with or a squad to just jump on Halo Infinite with on Friday nights, we've definitely got some openings. So come on over and join us at 8.30 p.m. Eastern Time. There you go, GT, with the, the shout-out for, for game night. We've got some news to go through. Now, I don't have Paramount Plus at the moment because... The wife and I were kind of fighting. Well, not fighting. <clears throat> She'd been winning Hulu for a while for a series that's coming or that has come out now. It just so happens it released the same week as the Halo TV show series released. And we were tracking that release before this one. So we have Hulu for Abbott Elementary, which is kind of like a public school version of The Office. And my wife being a teacher for six years, it definitely rings with her. So we're doing Hulu for at least a month, possibly two months. I'm not sure how long it's going to take for this season to run. But after that, we'll switch over to Paramount Plus, and then I'll watch the Halo TV show, and then we'll talk about the second season. I know it's not very befitting of a podcast that's focused on Halo and the latest and greatest stuff to not talk about the new season of the Halo TV show. Rest assured, we will get there. We did the same thing last time where we wait until the end to actually do our analysis of the TV show. There's plenty of YouTubers that are talking about it out there. I've already seen, I think, three or four videos from Hidden Xperia talking about the TV show. There's one from Installation Zero Zero. And, <clears throat> yeah. Uh, I can't use the Paramount Plus month trial because I would not be a new member because I was technically a member from last year. So that doesn't work for me. Laird, sorry. Uh, yeah, no longer new member. Don't get that benefit anymore. In other news, we've got, again, the BTB refresh that has landed in Halo Infinite, along with a little bit of a patch as well. We've also got a patch that dropped in Master Chief Collection, bringing some minor tweaks and fixes to the game. Uh, it seemed to take some people by surprise. I don't think we were surprised because... You know, they're, they're going to try to keep MCC going, I think. <clears throat> but a couple of fixes to some game customization settings, some Forge things, and some other spawning things with MCC. And yeah, I think that's it from game update perspective. We do have a couple of community articles on Waypoint, including the revival of the silver debrief to coincide with the season two of the halo tv so series so we're not going to talk about it too much here because it gets into a little bit of spoiler territory ish with us not walking through them just yet but ruspis is going through and providing a little bit more background on some of the tv episodes that are coming out so there'll be more of those as more and more episodes of the tv show gets released We've got details of the um, HCS Arlington event that's coming up here pretty soon. Tickets are available and on sale. So if you're looking to hit the first major of the season three for HCS and Halo Infinite, which takes place in Arlington, Texas, I believe the first weekend in March, 
then make sure you head on over to halo.gg to get your tickets and get some more details about the venue and hotels, flights, all that good stuff. We have a new community corner for the ISO Didacta, which is interesting that coincides with one of the uh, books that comes out in two weeks. And yes, pens, I know that means that I will be more behind on books and I still haven't finished the other book that I said I was going to finish a while ago. Thankfully, my taxes are done and Monday's a federal holiday, so maybe I'll get some reading done then and actually finish. Maybe. We'll see. But ISO Didacta is the latest community corner. I believe they're bringing these back to be monthly. So there is a whole interview section, but this person is does a lot of their own uh, didact and forerunner artwork around the didact and the librarian and some of the other kind of interwoven pieces. Obviously lots of inspiration from the Greg Bear stuff and Halo 4 being that's kind of the focus on the didact story and the forerunners there. So really cool to see that they are keeping that going. Next thing that we have is the spotlight, the community spotlight. A lot more stuff, a lot more artwork, and I, I mean, just go check it out. It's on Halo Waypoint. There's lots of really cool content every single time. A lot more Halo Infinite inspired stuff this time around with a, I think a splash of Halo Wars 2 content. There's a myriad of different posts, lots of artwork, lots of renders as well. A couple of Valentine's Day inspired things because Valentine's Day was this week. But as always, really cool content to look through uh, for the community update. Thank you, Pens, for dropping those links in the Twitch chat. We've got another community update, Fireteam February. This is kind of precluding or preluding the Spirit of Fire update or the content update 29, uh, as they listed it. A lot of this stuff we've already talked about, but they also did drop a new little mini novel, Halo Hippocratia. I think that's how you say it. Probably not. Uh, but this is one of those little Waypoint Chronicle books. It's like a little kind of short novella, about a 30 minute audio book on YouTube. I think this this their correct me if wrong pencil. So this is their fourth one that they've dropped. Hippocratica. Okay, thank you, Hayden. And also, it is the year of the dragon for the lunar year, so that is available in both. Uh, I think it was it MCC in Infinite, or maybe just MCC. But there is a year of the dragon nameplate that you can unlock in the Master Chief Collection. So if you log on to the game up until February twenty first, you can grab that nameplate. And we've also got the latest community montage that was put out for them season five. Lots of really cool community clips. I'm not sure how they pull those. Be interesting to know if other than on the thing at Tag with Halo Spotlight or, or whatnot. And the last thing we have is another cannon fodder issue number 149 titled covering fire. Uh, this one is a, uh, has a little bit of everything mixed into it. Not any one particular thing, a lot more focus on uh, some covenant stuff. And then there's little blurbs about epitaph, which is the book coming out in a couple weeks, a little bit of info on the illusion map and a little bit more Q and a type things in that update as well. Tomorrow, on Friday, February 16th, there's going to be a community play date hosted by 343 to uh, be playing in the big team playlist. So if you want your chance at the, I think it's what, the, the ice, the ice unicorn skin? I forget which one it is. Uh, the fire or the ice one. You match up with the folks that are playing in the play date tomorrow, then you can get your unlock for that. And I believe that covers all of the official Halo news type stuff. Definitely going to have some more conversations. I think once we get GT back and behind the microphone and the podcast and everything. And thanks, Pence. Yeah, I thought I didn't remember if it was the fire or the ice one. I, I forget which one is you get when you're one of them is if you have content published on Waypoint, 
and one of them is if you match. So it's probably the fire one for if you're featured on Waypoint, and then the ice one if you match in during the playdates as well. So thanks for that. Uh, but one of the topics we're going to be bringing up is still somewhat related to Halo, not exactly, but Microsoft has announced, and there's been a lot of speculation and rumor based off some discussions that Phil Spencer's had recently of Xbox exclusives no longer being exclusive to Xbox. And what does that mean for the platform? And is Xbox as a brand dying? Yada, yada, yada. If you've been on social media, you've seen the back and forth for a good while. Short of it is Xbox is still going to be around, but they're looking to expand Xbox exclusives to their platforms. And there are four games that are being looked at to come to PS5 and Nintendo Switch as part of this first wave of titles that were Xbox exclusives, now going to be multi-platform. One of them being Sea of Thieves, which I think several in our community has played before. And I don't recognize the other three. The other three are Hi-Fi Rush, Pentiment, and Grounded. Apparently, a uh, some of them are community driven and some are just titles that were not meant to ex- specifically be exclusive. But Sea of Thieves is definitely, I think, the most known one for being Xbox exclusive. So that'll be interesting to see it become cross platform and see if it gets a new spark of life. Now, there'll be a big question, especially for other big franchises that have been exclusive to. Xbox, like Halo, Gears of War, Mass Effect, if those franchises will also be made available to PlayStation and Nintendo. I think it's an interesting concept of bringing the games to other platforms. I feel like platform exclusives are kind of a cop-out in this day and age. I mean, it it definitely drives some console sales, but at, at this point... For me, as a as a gamer, I think if everything could be just PC, that'd be great. I feel like there's still going to be some of the whole console war stuff going on. I don't think Sony's really letting up on that. Nintendo is its own little universe, so anything that just kind of feeds in the e- ecosystem is just a, a plus for it. Nintendo's just kind of one, is like the survivor of the old guard when it comes to like Nintendo and the Sega Genesis and that whole era of consoles. Nintendo just has its its corner. It has Mario. It has Pokemon. It has Kirby. It has just its own world that no one else can really touch with it being Nintendo. So PS5 or PlayStation and Xbox being kind of those two competitors. If if Xbox decides to be not exclusive anymore, that that's going to be interesting for the industry for sure. Because then you're looking at, well, no one has a reason to buy Xbox if they want to play PlayStation games or they just are on PC. Consoles have traditionally been a sold at a loss, too, for companies where they recoup a lot of their costs on licensing for software. So if it's something that they don't mind, I guess, having less of a loss by not selling as many consoles and just pushing more games to a all platforms then maybe that helps make up the difference so i can see a business case for it i could also see an argument for it where it's like okay well if no one buys the xbox then what's the point of even having the xbox network and xbox live and all that stuff so now you're going to other things to <clears throat> pay for those it 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 definitely begs a question now it's going to be interesting that if those crop cross-platform games you still have to have an xbox live subscription or an xbox live gamer tag and i don't know how that would work with those games going to playstation like would that violate some kind of developer agreement with playstation where the game has to support playstation identities and and social interactions and i know for pc it's kind of one of those just hodgepodge things where of wherever you get the game from or the marketplace from is just you're integrated into that ecosystem and take master chief collection and infinite on steam. For example, you still have to have an Xbox live account, but you can still use the steam features as well. And there's no conflict of interest there, but for PS five console, I could very well see some kind of impact into the ecosystem of the identity integration 
and the social tools. So I'll have to see how that works out. I could I could see the possibility of it being a, an interesting power move for Microsoft to say, yeah, our Xbox sales don't really matter. We're confident in just pushing software out and maybe just becoming more of a developer studio instead of a console studio. But then again, <clears throat> Phil Spencer did say that they're not planning to stop making Xboxes and releasing the Xboxes anytime soon anyways. But curious what you guys think as well. Bobby in the chat saying they can only grow so much on their own in an isolated ecosystem by branching off in others. They did with PC a few years ago, like they did with the PC a few years ago. Well, I guess they don't make much money because of the fees from Nintendo Sony. There's more fans profit that they are reaching farther than they would otherwise not reach. And that and that's kind of the I think the one takeaway is you're definitely opening up your audience to more individuals, to more people. Look at the boom that essentially MCC got when it went from console to PC and just how many people were playing that game. You know, 343 would be nice if you just released Halo 5 as is for Windows. I mean, just do the minimal work you need to make it work. You already have a foundation with Halo 5 Forge on PC. You're really just missing matchmaking and campaign. I don't think people really care to balance it out at this point. Just put it on the PC and let people play it. I don't know if we'll ever see that. It's like just it's it's the only game that's not on PC is Halo 5. You have everything in MCC up through Halo 4. You have Spartan Strike, Spartan Assault, Halo Wars, Halo Wars 2. Literally, Halo 5 is the only Halo game not on PC. <laughs> Unless you technically count Halo 5 Forge, but that's just a stripped out version of Halo 5 that doesn't have matchmaking or campaign. Other than that though, every single Halo game's on PC. <laughs> I don't think it would be that much effort. Anyways, I'll get off my soapbox. <laughs> Confound saying Halo 5 Force doesn't count. Yeah, I, I wouldn't think so either. So I think that covers most of the, the news stuff. I need to get my button gear and actually try to get some interviews lined up for the podcast so we can do more shows without just waiting for news to come through. If we don't have anything next week, we will probably start jumping into the cursed mod for Halo 3. It's done by a different group. Um, that, speaking of which, I need to reach out to the developers of the original Cursed Halo, or Cursed Again, and see if they'd like to be interviewed since we did finish that mod. If you all have any ideas, feel free to throw them over to me. Definitely interested in trying to see what you all might be interested in guest-wise, and I will see what I can do. Being GT less this week, that means it's going to be a lot shorter show. I have about a, looks like a 20 minute runtime or so on this one. So apologies for the short show. It's hard to have your own dialogue when it's just yourself and Twitch chat. But nonetheless, definitely appreciate you all continuing to listen and continuing to support the podcast. We'll be back on Thursday next week, either again doing a podcast if we have a guest or playing Cursed. Halo 3 on MCC. And as far as I know, Frag and Friday is still on for tomorrow and for the next Friday. But come on over, join us. Friday nights at 8.30 p.m. Eastern Time. Podcast is Thursdays at 9 p.m. Eastern Time now. Slight little time change. Adjusting for baby schedule now that that's a thing. But we'll wrap it up for there tonight. And we'll see you all on the next one. Thank you for listening to Podtacular, the unofficial Halo Universe podcast. You can find our podcast on your favorite podcasting service and listen to us live every Thursday night at 8.30 p.m. Eastern Time on Twitch. Check out our website, podtacular.com, and join the community on Discord at podtacular.com slash Discord. If you want to play Halo with us, come join us for Frag and Fridays at 8.30 p.m. Eastern Time. You can find us on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube. Become a supporter of the show by sharing the show with your friends and family. Or help keep the lights on by subscribing to us on Twitch, donating via PayPal, or becoming a patron alongside Confal, Pins Halo, and Prestige Ace. Until next time, keep on fragging trucks. <laughs>